Okay, today we're going to look at a problem that involves a, uh, a curler who's sliding the stone a known distance. You're given in the problem that it's 45 meters, that the stone slides down as it's traveling across the ice. It's going to slow in its motion because of friction, and this is a friction problem. So you're given the mass of the stone here. You know that friction is going to play a role. You're also given the initial velocity over here. And so we're going to do some calculations so that we can figure out what the coefficient of kinetic friction is between the stone and the ice. I'm going to start by drawing a free body diagram of my system here so that I can really keep track of the forces. I like to put the 20 kilogram mass inside of that box so that I don't lose sight of it. I know that any object that's being pulled on by gravity is going to have a weight. Fg is equal to mg. I'm going to probably need this number, so I'm going to go ahead and calculate it. It's going to be 20 kilograms inside of there. And then this is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so I'm running out of room a little bit there. Uh, I left out my units. But that's going to come out to be this quantity, that the weight of the object is equal to negative 196 newtons. So I'm just doing that now because I know I'm going to need it. I have this FG. It's resting on the surface of the ice. That means that there is a normal force that is being uh, exerted on this upwards, a reactionary force. So it is going to act with the same quantity, that 196 newtons, as the weight was because it is not accelerating in the vertical. So this is going to be a positive 196. Then I have some sort of friction that's acting on this thing. I'm kind of implying that this object is moving towards the right and then I can assign that the friction must be acting in the opposite direction because remember friction always opposes motion or intended motion. So here's some sort of friction force and I will elaborate on that in a little bit. Other than that, I have some information about the object's velocity. I know that the initial velocity was given to me as 0.5 meters per second. I know that the delta D that this experiences as it travels down the course is 45 meters. That was given in the problem statement. The final velocity is going to be equal to zero because it is implied that this thing is going to come to a stop. And the last thing that I need, I need some other variable so that I can do a calculation and I'm going to need to solve for the acceleration. I'm doing that so that I can see how the friction over here is going to be involved in causing this acceleration, the slowing of the stone. The equation that I'm going to need to use to solve for the acceleration looks like this. This is one of Newton's uh, four acceleration equations, plus 2a delta d. The final velocity is 0. That's getting squared, but remains 0. Then v initial was 0 0.5 meters per second. Okay, that's squared, plus 2 times the A quantity that I'm solving for times 45 meters. I'm going to leave out my units for a little bit just to keep it a little bit cleaner, but this quantity here is going to simplify to 0.25 plus 90A, where A is the acceleration. I'm going to move this 0.25 to the other side of the equation. And then I will divide by the 90 that's over there in order to isolate and solve for A. A is going to be equal to negative 0 0.00278. That's now a rounded number. Okay, so there's the acceleration that I've solved for. It is a negative. That's good. That means that it's slowing down. If the velocity is in the positive direction, this negative acceleration will cause slowing. That acceleration is because of friction. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move into Newton's laws, and I'm going to say that these forces over here, these two vertical forces, they're going to cancel each other. So the vertical really has nothing interesting happening to it. The only force that's being applied to my system right now, the stone is the system, is that friction. So F net, the net forces, 
would normally be equal to all three of those forces, but the top two are canceling, so the, or the two verticals are canceling. So the net force is actually equal to the friction in this case. I also know from Newton's second law that the net force is equal to mass times acceleration, where I know both quantities on the right. So F net is going to be equal to 20 kilograms multiplied by negative 0 0.00278 meters per second squared, which means that F net is equal to negative 0 0.05 repeated newtons. From this first equation that I put up here, I also know that that is equal to the force of friction. Now reclaiming a little board space, I'm going to turn to my equation that talks about friction. This is kinetic friction here, so it's a moving object. The force of friction, specifically kinetic friction, is going to be equal to mu k, that is the coefficient of kinetic friction, multiplied by the normal force. Now this equation really only deals with the magnitudes of the force vectors. So I have this upward force, the Fn, is going to be useful in providing the magnitude of the friction here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep everything positive. Mu must be a positive number, that mu sub k. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to pull in 0 0.05 repeated newtons, that was the absolute value of my friction, is equal to mu sub k multiplied by the normal force. This is 196 newtons. So I divide the 196 over and I get my final answer, which is mu k is equal to 2.83 times 10 to the minus 4. That is a unitless number carries no units. So that is my final answer. That's a very small amount of friction, but certainly there is a very small amount of friction uh, that that stone would experience as it travels down the curling rink. If you think you got that all and you got it all figured out, then let your computer know.